Hello, my name is Maria and welcome to my second channel on which I talk about whatever I want. If you don't know me, most people know me as Masha Nuts on the internet, which is my main channel. I make friendship bracelet videos and tutorials about them as well. And currently I am a full-time YouTuber. I've been doing this consistently for the past two years, so I feel like I have some advice to give. I'm not going to be giving advice on how to grow your channel, how to blow up on YouTube. I see so many videos about that. That's not what I'm doing here. I mostly want to talk about how to be a YouTuber sustainably and how to be a youtuber and take care of your mental health in the process so this video isn't really aimed for people just starting out their channels this is more for people who already have an audience already are doing YouTube and are just trying to figure it all out I guess like we all are I'll leave timestamps in the description if you want to skip around the video and go to a specific topic but that being said I'm just gonna go ahead and jump into it my first piece of advice, which I wish somebody gave me when I started, was get an accountant. As soon as you start earning any kind of money, get an accountant. You don't have to outright hire someone to specifically work for you. There are plenty of services on the internet where you can sort of hire an accountant to do your tax return specifically for you and they don't cost that much money. I live in the UK and I believe I pay something like 30 pound a month, which is a bit on the high side in terms of like a subscription payment. Like you don't pay that much for Netflix or whatever other kind of subscriptions that you have, but I promise you it is worth it. And you can also claim those expenses on your tax returns anyway. Now I can only really talk about this from a UK perspective but I also believe that this is a universal kind of advice. Getting an accountant absolutely helps you sort out your finances and your taxes, especially if you are young and have never done this before, like I am. I filed my taxes for the first time this year and it was stressful until I got an accountant. That being said, I also recommend you track your income and expenses just for your own personal reasons. I would probably even recommend getting a completely separate account for your YouTube income or whatever online income. It doesn't have to be a business account specifically, but just a separate account so that all your money that you are earning from whatever online channels goes to this account first and then whatever expenses you are making on behalf of your channel, which you then want to claim on your taxes, do it through that separate account so it's not in combination with everything else. You can still do it with everything else. It's not a problem, it's just more convenient for you to do it separately because it makes filing for your tax return much easier. I would also recommend keeping any invoices or receipts that you have for purchases made on behalf of your channel. So for me personally, since I'm a bracelet YouTuber, I make bracelet videos. Not only can I claim like my camera, for example, or my microphone that I purchased this year, I can also claim strings, any other materials that I'm using to create my bracelets, like key rings, wooden dowels that I use to make bracelets on, different charms and stuff like that. You can claim all of these things on your tax return and keeping receipts and invoices for these kinds of things is just a good idea in case you get investigated by the tax agency of whatever country you are in. And also just for yourself. The way that I do it is I have a little folder in which I just shove receipts for whatever day that I use them in, but I've seen other people do it in different ways. I've seen people purchase like a page a day calendar books in which you have a page per day and then they just staple in the receipts for whatever they purchased that day. Whatever system works for you, either way, I recommend you keep your receipts. Talking a little bit more about purchases, I don't recommend you go all out and purchase a bunch of gear. You really don't need it, especially if you're starting out. Start by using whatever you have, make videos, get into the rhythm of making videos, figure out what you wanna do, how you wanna do it, and then, if you feel like it, and if you can justify the expense, purchase whatever gear that you like. If you are going to purchase gear, personally, I think lighting is the most important. I am using a ring light right now, which works pretty well for me. And the second most important thing I personally think is sound. So if you are looking to increase your video quality, get a mic. Camera quality is also important, but I think that's the third most important thing out of the three things. Another thing that I would recommend purchasing is a license to use music. There is the YouTube audio library. You can always get background music from there or any kind of music for any kind of video that you are looking for. The YouTube audio library is huge. So if you can't purchase licenses for tracks for whatever reason, definitely use that or whatever kind of free royalty free music that you can find on the internet. But the issue with that music is that everyone has heard it a million times over. The YouTube audio library hasn't changed much in the last 10 years and I promise you, you've heard all of the tracks that are on there and so has your audience. So getting a license for whatever kind of music track that you want lets you diversify the music that you have in your videos 
and creates a unique kind of vibe. Personally, I like to use chill hop music because it's chill and I like it, but you do need to purchase a license to be able to use them. They're not that expensive, by the way. I think I paid like five pounds or 10 pounds or something, and then I can just use them in my videos. Let's talk a bit about how YouTube affects your mental health. I can't remember the creator name, but I'll put it here and in the description of the video. I watched this video recently, which was on the topic of why big YouTubers stop uploading. And while I'm not a big YouTuber per se, I can definitely relate to a lot of what was said in that video. So if you're curious in that topic, I would recommend watching that video, linked in the description. But basically YouTube really affects your mental health. I'm still struggling with it, to be honest, but I do have some things that I personally believe have helped me. So I'm going to share them with you and hopefully they might help some of you. It's not a one size fits all solution, but I'm just sharing what worked for me personally. Whenever you see these videos of people telling you how to grow your channel or how to get more views or how to be a YouTuber, they always say, have a schedule. I do not agree. I don't think having a schedule is a, this amazing solution for that. And I don't think that schedules work for everyone. If it works for you, awesome, I'm happy for you. They absolutely don't work for me. Schedules do not work for me. I've been doing this for two years. I've tried having schedules. I've tried not having schedules. And I can tell you, not having a schedule has helped my mental health so much. I used to have a schedule where I posted twice a week on specific days and I would say that at the end of each video. And in theory that works well because you remind the viewer at the end of each video what days you post videos on so then they learn to expect videos from you on those specific days. Having a schedule also allows you to be in a rhythm with your content and that allows you to perfect the video production timeline and get into a routine creating videos faster and more efficiently. But it absolutely did not work for me. I get hit with a ton of inspiration sometimes and that doesn't fit into a two video week schedule. I want to create five videos some weeks. I want to post every day some weeks and sometimes I can. I actually do create enough content to be able to do that and sometimes I want to. Other times I fall into depressive phases or I just lack motivation for whatever reason and then I don't post for weeks. Schedules do not work for me personally, but I have found a solution for myself. So that's why I'm sharing. Hopefully it'll help someone. I don't set myself a clear cut schedule. I don't tell my viewers that I post on these days, but I set schedules for myself weekly. Every Sunday I sit down and I think about what videos I want to post and when for the upcoming week. I then compile that into an image of a schedule and I share that with my viewers. I post it on my YouTube community page. I post it on my Instagram, put it in a highlight. I post it on my Discord server. I share that schedule everywhere that I can with my viewers so they can know what videos they can expect from me for that week. But that allows me to change the schedule every Sunday. If I decide that I want to stream that week, I can put in streams. If I decide that I'm not feeling like streaming this week, I don't have to. If I wanna make a second channel video like this one, I put it on there. If I'm not feeling the second channel that particular week for whatever reason, I leave it out. For me personally, that's kind of like the best of both worlds because I still have this routine. I still plan it out for myself, but I don't put myself into this box where I have to upload all the time at the same days. I have flexibility there and I still get to share with my viewer. I don't share everything with my viewer though. I probably plan out my videos about three, four weeks in advance, roughly. I obviously change stuff there. I don't just completely go by that schedule, stuff changes, but I plan out things further in advance than I share with my viewers. But nevertheless, things change. So a week in advance is how I go. I would recommend trying it. If it works for you, that's great. Another thing that I think helps with mental health on YouTube or on whatever sort of social media platform that you are using is not checking views and likes unless you really have to for like a sponsorship or whatever. I hate that. I absolutely hate looking at my view count. I hate that the YouTube Creator Studio has a system of ranking your videos from one to 10 and it tells you how well your video is doing compared to the other videos that you have. Especially because, you know, when it's down in the like nine or 10 ranking, it feels horrible. And even if you are getting decent views, you still look at that comparison. You see that you're on the ninth or 10th step there and it makes you feel horrible. I don't like checking views. I don't check my views very often. I don't check my like to dislike ratio basically ever. I don't check my likes on my Instagram posts very much after like the first, I don't know, 12 hours. And I don't recommend doing that. There's no real point to, unless you are specifically doing it for a purpose. You're compiling some sort of analytics for yourself. You're trying to analyze 
why certain videos got views and others didn't. If you are doing it because you are required to for a sponsorship to submit your numbers or whatever, that I can understand. And in those cases, absolutely check your stats. But if you're just existing in your daily life, there is no reason for you to go and check what views your video is getting that you just posted a couple hours ago. Enjoy your time off from posting. If you have time off, enjoy it as time off. Don't look at your stats. I have stopped doing this in the last year probably because there's no benefit for me to do that. I gain absolutely nothing from checking how my video is doing and I can potentially lose everything. I can potentially see that my video isn't performing as well as I thought it was and then I get sad. What's the point of that? But I know people are different. If you like checking your stats, check your stats by all means. I'm just sharing what worked for me once again. I don't remember who I heard say this, but when I heard this being said, I absolutely loved it and I want to share this with you guys as well. Hate comments are a thing that you get whatever you do on the internet. It is just basically a given at this point. But someone said this and I loved it and it's kind of changed my perspective on how I think about these things. Don't take criticism from people that you wouldn't take advice from. And you wouldn't take advice from a random troll on the internet. So why take their criticism? I like that. Just felt like sharing. I don't really have much more to add on that point. Two more things about mental health and then I'll move on to a different topic. Film in bulk. I'm filming this video right now. I already filmed a video for my main channel today and I'm also filming like probably two or three other videos today after this one. I sit down and I film multiple videos per day. I also told you about the schedules, right? Plan out your time. When you are planning out your time, also plan out what videos you can film together. I'm not gonna show you because then I'll spoil it for my viewers, but I have a schedule for the next like six weeks and I literally just took a pen and I highlighted what videos I could film at the same time on in one day. There's nothing wrong with filming multiple videos in a day. In fact, it increases your productivity so much. But if you absolutely don't want people to think that you filmed in one day, just change your clothes. There's nothing wrong with doing that either. But filming in bulk absolutely helps with video production. You can get so many more videos out so much faster if you film more than one at a time. And the last thing about mental health and YouTube, take breaks. I beg you, please do that. I didn't take breaks for the first year and a half that I did this and I ended up getting into a cycle where I worked non-stop and I pushed myself extremely hard for like two weeks straight and then I would crash and I had zero energy, zero creativity, zero motivation to do anything. I was just exhausted and that went on for like a week, a week and a half. And then because I had been gone for that long, I then when I came back to work had to sort of make up for that time and I pushed myself extra hard and it was a never ending cycle that I am still trying to break out of, to be honest. I'm still kind of in that. The last crash that I had was like a week ago where I was gone for two weeks, but that was also some personal issues. But still, these things happen and by taking breaks, you reduce the chance of those things happening. And it's difficult, it really is. People don't understand it, I think, because when you work for yourself, you make your own schedule. You get to decide when you work, when you don't, when you take time off. And that is a huge privilege, absolutely. But it is also really difficult to do because when you are your own boss, and especially if you enjoy your work, you want to keep doing it all of the time and you push yourself. There is no line between home life and work life. It's just one life and you end up pushing yourself too hard. At least that's the case for me. So scheduling breaks in, literally scheduling them in. I have days in my calendar that I have scheduled as days off. That really helps and I absolutely recommend it. All right, I'm done talking about mental health. I have some more sort of like random advice for YouTubers here that doesn't really fit into much of a category, but let's get on it. Change your password from your YouTube account, absolutely change your password and change it regularly. Now that you are a public figure, you are more susceptible for hacking. Take care of your passwords, make them unique, make them hard to guess. Set up two-step authentication. Take care of your account. That is very important. Both your YouTube account, your Instagram account, whatever other social media accounts that you have, put unique passwords for all of them, two-step authentication for all of them and change them regularly. If you can't remember that much, set up a system where you write them down somewhere within your own home or whatever, but definitely, definitely do that. Also, if you have any kind of business email that you use, make sure that that email is different than the email that you use to log into your YouTube account. A lot of people don't do that and that's a horrible idea. Please have separate emails for that. You don't need to tell people your login information. And in general, just be careful with 
security on your channel. Diversify your platform. If you are just a YouTuber, create an Instagram, create a Twitter account, stream on Twitch if you feel like it, create a TikTok that's booming nowadays, have a Discord server to connect with your viewers. But also don't put too much pressure on yourself to do those things. If you are only doing YouTube videos and you're still trying to get into a routine with that, definitely focus on that. But diversifying your audience and diversifying your platforms is always a good idea because you have backups in case one gets hacked or lost for whatever reason, you have multiple channels of connecting with your audience, and you have multiple ways to remind your audience of your existence, essentially. If people only watch you on YouTube, they don't think of you as much as if they followed you on Instagram, on Twitter, if they have joined your Discord and talked to you on there regularly. They think of you more often if you interact with them on multiple platforms, and that's always a good thing because you don't want your audience to forget about you. Plug yourself. Absolutely do that. People get really ashamed to do that sometimes in YouTube videos. Also, some people do it very shamelessly. I'm sort of in the middle there. I feel kind of weird about it. Sometimes I feel like I over plug myself, but definitely do that. There is no way your audience is going to know that you are doing a cool new thing unless you tell them about it. Also consider the fact that not everybody watches every single video. So announcing something in one video is not enough. If you are creating something new, announce it in the entire week that you are doing it. If you have multiple channels, cross promote them. I have a bracelet channel if you want to follow me there. It's Marsha Knotts, it's linked in the description. It's as easy as that. Definitely recommend doing that. Cut your long intros. Nobody likes long intros, but if you feel like having a long intro, and I sometimes do, then leave timestamps for your audience to skip it if they feel like it. There is a portion of your audience that cares about what you have to say. If you have some kind of life update or whatever you want to share in that intro, there are people that want to watch that. But there are also people who just want you to get on with it and get into whatever topic of the video that you have. Leave a timestamp for your audience to skip around. And with that being said, leave timestamps for basically everything, really. Especially if you're doing a long video or you're talking about multiple points like I am here, leaving timestamps is always a good idea. I feel like a lot of people get really scared of leaving timestamps because then they think that, oh, people aren't going to watch the entire thing. They're just going to skip to the part that they want to watch and then ignore the rest of it. That's fine. That's not a bad thing. If people want to skip to whatever part the video they want to skip to, that's okay. If anything, that probably gets you more views anyway, because if they're watching the video and the first few minutes you're talking about something that they don't want to hear about, but they have no way of knowing what's coming next or skipping to what they actually want to hear, they're just gonna leave. They're not gonna stick around and wait until potentially they hear something that they actually came to you for. And now especially YouTube created this like feature where you can hover on a video, whether on mobile or on desktop and see what the title is of the section that they're watching. Utilize that, it's an awesome feature. And last but not least, connect with your audience. Answer comments, answer DMs, comment on people's posts on Instagram or interact with them on Twitter or just talk to them on Discord. Find a way to connect with your audience. Not only is that a good business decision because you are actually personally connecting with people who are watching you, it's also awesome for your mental health. Being a YouTuber is a really weird experience because you are literally most of the time sitting in your room talking to a camera. I am in my bedroom right now in lockdown. I haven't seen a person other than my roommate for the past four months because we've been locked down since November. But yet I am still talking to so many people through my camera. And this is weird. And sometimes as YouTubers, we forget that there are real people watching. It's a genuinely strange and surreal experience. So connecting with your audience makes this whole thing feel real and human. And it helps you mentally, at least it helps me mentally quite significantly. So I definitely recommend. Anyway, I feel like this video is getting pretty long. That's all the advice that I have for you guys today. I would love it if you'd leave a comment. I literally just said connecting with your audience really helps you as a YouTuber on like a mental health level. So if you feel like chatting to me, definitely leave a comment. But yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Before I go, I want to give a special shout out to my patrons and especially my top supporters whose names are gonna appear on screen. These are patrons from my martial arts channel who indirectly support this channel as well. If you also want to become a patron and support both channels, the link is in the description to do so. But in any case, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you feel like sticking around with me, hanging out, this is a channel on which I talk about whatever I want. There's new topics every week. Then definitely subscribe as well. And I will see you in my next video.
Bye.